Phil is saying, please don't know I have a straight. Please don't throw your hand away. Please call. Oh, and he gets his wish. Berman calls. Now, Lyle would make the best hand if a nine came out. Would give him a higher straight. Turns a ten of clubs. Helmuth again quick to check. He's trying to induce Lyle to bet. He's trying to say, well, I was going for a flush. I didn't make it. Why don't you bet, big guy? See if Lyle falls for it. And again, Helmuth gets exactly what he asked for. Berman bets 35000 Even though he's not going to get called, I think Phil Helmuth should raise here. He doesn't know what Lyle has. Instead, he just calls. I don't believe Phil Helmuth is trying to induce a bet on the river. I think he's playing this hand very cautiously. River's a king of clubs. He is the most cautious player in this tournament. Both players check. Helmuth reveals the straight, and he takes down the biggest pot in the match so far. And play. Lyle's correct. He did not play that hand that well, but he still could have won with a nine on the river. Excellent play, Phil. Well, excellent hand. Lyle played it bad. Phil's got Lyle talking to his invisible man. Well, he flopped the straight, and I tried to blow. Unlike Phil, at least Lyle's giving the invisible man the correct information. Painful for Lyle Berman to watch Helmuth take a two and a half to one chip advantage. Helmuth with a suited ace ten, and he calls. Limps with the big hand. I call. Lyle doing a little play-by-play -play for us, saying Phil limps with the big hand, and he's right. Flop comes seven eight ace a pair of sevens for Lyle Berman who checks but aces for Phil Helmuth. He bets six thousand. Now Lyle has a pair sevens. He's going to call and he changes his mind. Decided that his play by play was probably correct. Phil probably had an ace. All right we resume at an outer table now where John Jawanda Gabe's pre tournament pick has his tournament life on the line. T.J. Cloutier has Jawanda all in. We got 12 and exactly, John. You just don't have any faith, Matt. All John Juwanda has to do is double up 14 more times, and he's got the <laughs> tournament lead. Juwanda has just 12,000 in chips. He's all in on Ace 10. TJ's got to call whatever he has. Cost him 6,000 to win 18,000. He's getting three to one on the money, and if he wins this hand, he wins the match. TJ has called with King Seven. Not a bad hand to call on. <laughs> no, as you see, it's 35-65. And if TJ gets lucky, wins this hand, this match is over. John Jawanda was one of the hottest players coming into this tournament. Flop brings seven, nine, queen, a pair of sevens for Cloutier. John Jawanda is going to need an ace or a ten. Another seven on the turn. That'll do it, Matt. This match is over. <laughs> TJ Cloutier advances to the semifinals. <laughs> Eliminating John Jawanda and Chris Ferguson finally knows who he'll be playing in the next round. Lucky. I want to do lucky with these ace queen. Somebody taunting TJ for getting lucky. I think both those guys got lucky during the course of that match. TJ Cloutier's road to the semis is littered with talented players. In the first round, he eliminated seven card stud specialist Nick Frangus. It was on to the next round where TJ defeated the mad genius of poker, Mike Carroll. In the round of 16, he took down John Hennigan. Yes, and John Hennigan is lucky that we don't make shirt jokes on this poker show. And in the quarterfinal match we just watched, TJ eliminated your pre-tournament pick game, John Jawanda. Cloutier moves on. Half our semifinal field is set. Who else will advance? We'll find out next. James needs a king or he'll be eliminated. King of diamonds on the river. And James Woods is still around. Pair of tens for Sklansky. Now Scott Fishman is in a world of trouble. You see it. He needs a seven or a nine. It's a nine. Fish Tank loves it. David Skolansky sleeps with the fishes. Just the ace of diamonds out of there that burned the deck. 
Turns an ace of clubs, and James has made it straight. James Woods has Johnny no Chan heart. on the verge of elimination. Only a queen or a heart can save him. Queen of hearts! Unbelievable. Nice hand. Nice hand. Nice hand. Well, I can't believe that Antonio is calling here. Queen on the turn. Wow. That is a dagger in the heart of Ted Forrest. Phil Helmuth made a bad read, and you can see it on his face. Look at Phil Helmuth. He is about to swallow himself whole. Huxseed is about to totally turn the tables in this match. He has to avoid a king. King! Unbelievable. From the pit to the pinnacle with one turn card. Poker can be cruel. There have been a lot of miracle cards landed inside the Golden Nugget during the tournament and to relive the best moments of the 2005 National Heads Up Poker Championship, you can see the entire series on DVD. All eight hours plus special features, including an inside look at the inaugural draft lottery. DVD is available at headsuppokerchamp.com. We've already seen some great hands between Scott Fishman and Antonio Esfandiari. They're still about even. Fishman was suited 9-3, raises to 4,000. Is Fondiari with King Queen, and he'll call. Flop comes Queen King 10, too big pair for his Fondiari. And he was not the raiser going in. He bets 3,000 here. Now, Scott Fishman tried to buy the pot before the flop with 9 3. He's not giving up. He raises to 8,000. Now, in a normal pot with normal players, there should be a big raise here by Antonio, but this is not a normal game and these two guys aren't normal players. So Antonio calls. Top two pair and he just calls. Turns an eight of diamonds. As Fandiari checks. He is reeling Scott Fishman in. And Fishman bets 11,000. Again, Antonio calls. Now that surprises me. At this point, I think he should have raised. And on the river is six of hearts. Now he bets out just over 17,000. That's a good bet because it looks like he's trying to represent that he made a flush. And Fishman comes out with a raise up to 50,000. Scott Fishman is not giving it up. He's saying, you didn't make the flush. I'm going to pretend I made the flush. As Fondiari has nothing of it, he calls, and he'll take down a sizable pot with his two pair. Scott Fishman's unorthodox style did not work there. He put in a wager on all four betting rounds. He just would not give up. He ran into two pair, and he lost a sizable pot. So after taking down almost 150 grand in chips and taking a two and a half to one chip lead as Fandiari with the suited ace jack, the blinds have increased here to two and four thousand. And as Fandiari raises to 12,000, ace four for Scott Fishman. Scott should probably call here. Instead, he raises to 34,000. I think that raise has something to do with him losing that last hand. Another 60 grand from his Fondiari. Now it's up to 94,000. Antonio realized that Scott Fishman still may be steaming from that last hand. And I might fold for another raise. Antonio's saying he might fold for another raise. He wants Scott to call. He knows he's got the best hand right now. He wants to gamble. He wants to win this match right here. Scott is figuring out how much money he has. He's not even sure he has 60,000. Can you scoot those in a little closer? Antonio's rubbing it in. He says, put the chips that are already committed closer to me. He wants Scott to call. He's using all the tricks in his arsenal to get Scott you to call. Momentum. There's another one. Call me, please. Is he allowed to do that, dealer? All right, let's go. And indeed, he makes the call. Fishman calls for 60,000. He hangs on to just 500 in chips, and this hand has all the earmarks of somebody <laughs> getting very man. badly hurt. Put the 60 in. Oh, let's go. sorry, sorry. This would be the greatest laydown in the history of poker. Flop comes 3 8 Queen. And now Fishman's all in for his remaining 500. Esfandiari calls. I got nothing. How big enough? Decent. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you got the second best nothing. Ace King would be the best nothing. He's got the second best nothing. Ace